using HashiCorp Vault with Cloud BCI. If you've been using Cloud BCI for any amount of time, you're used to defining credentials within either the Operations Center or the controllers. But what do you do when you need to rotate those credentials? Maybe you need to change the password for a username password, or you need to change the value of a secret text. If everything had been defined correctly within your Cloud BCI environment, you would go to one place, make that change, and everything would be fine. But in reality, a lot of times, people will enter in the same credential on their controllers and maybe on the operations center, and that credential has now expanded to live in multiple places. That's where a centralized credential store like HashiCorp Vault comes into play. Using a store like that makes it trivial to be able to rotate credentials. Here's today's starting point. I have a Cloud BCI installation that is based on 2.401.1.3. I have one operation center and one client controller. From an open source perspective, there has been a HashiCorp Vault plugin for a number of years, but that plugin would not work with the operation center. Now with the new CloudBees HashiCorp Vault plugin, it not only works on the controllers, but it also includes working with the operation center. On top of that, the CloudBees HashiCorp Vault plugin works with both HashiCorp Vault and HashiCorp Vault Enterprise. So let's take a look at the documentation for the plugin. And the link to this documentation is down in the description. And what we can see here is that the plugin requires Cloud BCI on either modern cloud platforms or traditional platforms, 2.387.2.3 or higher. You need some version of HashiCorp Vault 1.80 or newer. And then, not surprisingly, or maybe surprisingly, the operation center and the controllers that are going to be interacting with HashiCorp Vault must be able to access it. So that means you need to be able to connect over whatever ports are open for your installation. There's a state diagram that shows the whole process that happens within the plugin. Now, here's the key part about the plugin. It is not managing the credentials within HashiCorp Vault. What we'll be doing is we'll be setting up a credential provider that then will define mappings within our operation center and our controller back to the actual credentials within the HashiCorp Vault instance. This will make more sense as we go through and create these. So we have to install the plugin. Let's go over to our operation center first. I've already gone ahead and installed the plugin and restarted the operation center. In this case, if we take a look at installed plugins and we look for vault, what we'll see at least at the time of recording is we have Cloudbees HashiCorp vault plugin version 0.12. If we go over to the controller, we also have that exact same plugin installed. And this is really important because if you only want to use the credentials on the operation center and never have it flow down to your controllers, then you would only need that plugin installed in the operation center. But probably more times than not, you're going to want to be able to access these credentials from your controllers as well. So that means not only do you have to install the plugin on the operation center, but you also have to install the plugins on the controllers. So if we take a look at plugins, we go to installed plugins, and I search for vault. I also see here Cloudbees HashiCorp Vault plugin 0.12. Now, if in your installation, you have the open source version of the HashiCorp Vault plugin installed, you may want to uninstall that plugin. So that way you know exactly which plugin is actually interacting with your HashiCorp Vault instance. So let's go back over to our operation center and let's go back to the documentation and the first thing that we're going to need to do is to define a credential provider. Now I'm going to go through two different scenarios in this video. The first one is we're going to define the credential provider on the operation center and make some credentials available for all of our connected controllers. Let's assume that these credentials are just useful credentials that everybody can use, nothing special about them other than that they need to be available to all the controllers. So we'll go into our credentials provider and we're going to set up a URL and then we're going to add an authentication. So let's go do that. Let's go back into our controllers. We're on the operation center, manage Jenkins. We'll click on credentials provider. What we'll see here is the HashiCorp vault credentials provider. If you don't see this block on the credentials provider, that means the plugin has not been installed yet. If it has been installed, you might need to restart the operation center in order for this block to show up on the screen. For this video, I'm actually just using HashiCorp Vault and not HashiCorp Vault Enterprise. So for my URL, you can see that it's HTTP and port 8200. 
going back to the beginning, I need to make sure that my operation center and my controller can actually access this instance on port 8200. If I had firewalls in between, I would need to make sure that I can actually access it. Now you'll also notice, since I'm running this locally, it's not secure. I need to go ahead and skip SSL verification because I don't have SSL running on that HashiCorp Vault instance. For this scenario, that's fine, but in real life, you would want to make sure that you always verify the certificate that is on your HashiCorp Vault instance. Now, next up, we need to set up an authentication. At this point, the only authentication type is APRL. So that means within HashiCorp Vault, you would already have to have an APRL set up and configured. In my case, I've already done that. Now let's take a look at the fields that we're gonna fill in. There's authentication ID, namespace, role ID, and secret ID. Now, if you've worked with HashiCorp Vault at all, the role ID and secret ID are very familiar to you. So those are gonna be the two pieces of information that you may already be aware of. You just need to put those values within these fields. Now, the other two fields, authentication ID is just a string value that's going to be used when we actually map our credentials or we're setting up our credentials to map to the credentials that live within the HashiCorp Vault instance. So in this case, I'm just going to say operation center. Now for namespace, since I'm not actually integrating with a HashiCorp Vault enterprise instance, namespace doesn't matter because namespaces don't exist within HashiCorp Vault only within HashiCorp Vault Enterprise. I'll paste in the value of my role ID, and then I'll paste in the value of the secret ID. Now, before we click on test connection, which lit up in the bottom right-hand corner, let's go back over to the documentation. If we scroll down here, we'll see a snapshot of basically what we just filled out. Now, in this case, what we want to do is we want to expand this view provider details dropdown here. And let's go over to the secret ID section. By default, the secret ID generated by the HashiCorp Vault instance has a TTL on it, or potentially even a num uses attribute. Once those values are hit, then the role ID and the secret ID no longer work. So in my case, when I set up my app role, I made sure to set secret ID num uses to zero and my secret ID TTL to zero as well. That way, that role ID secret ID combination doesn't time out. So let's go ahead and go back over to our operation center and click on test connection. If everything actually connects, we're going against a URL with the role ID and secret ID. If everything's fine, we should get a connected in the bottom left-hand corner. Let's assume for a moment that I mistyped in my role ID. I'm gonna take the four off of my role ID and I'm going to click on test connection. What we'll see here is we'll get an error occurred while contacting Vault and we have an invalid role ID, which is fine. So if we put the four back in, we see that we're connected back to our HashiCorp Vault instance one more time. If for some reason we messed up and put in the wrong port and click on test connection, we get an error saying unexpected end of stream. Again, if everything is fine, we put in our right values, what we expect to see when we click on test connection is connected. If we don't see connected, we need to resolve that error before we move on. But since we see connected in our case, we can continue on. So we'll go ahead and click on save. Now on my HashiCorp Vault instance, I've set up two types of credentials. I've set up a username password and I've set up a secret text. But remember, it's basically just key value stores. So in my case, I set up a key value store version one and also a key value store of version two. So we're gonna be taking a look at both of those, but from a Cloud BCI perspective, other than just setting them up and making sure we're mapping to the correct types of engines, that's all that we need to know. In this first version, what we're gonna do is we're gonna map into our version one credentials. So let's go ahead and go back over here. We'll go to credentials. And what we'll see now, stores scope to Jenkins, we'll see HashiCorp Vault. I'm gonna click on global and then click on add credential. So here we have two choices, a vault secret text or vault username password. For the first one, let's go ahead and select username password. This is a key point to understand as well. These are the only two types of credentials currently that you can use within HashiCorp Vault. So we have vault username password. I'm going to select my engine to be the V1 engine. You'll notice here authentication. Remember when we set up our credential provider, we just put in operations dash center just to have value in that field. Well, if we take a look at that, you can see that we only have that one value. We could set up multiple authentications within our credential provider, but in our case, we only set up the one, so we only see the one here. Now the path that we need to put here is the path that exists within the HashiCorp Vault instance. Let's go ahead and paste in this path 
and I'm going to tab out of the field. So what happened here is it looked up the path. We already know we have a good connection to our instance, but it says the requested vault resource was not found. Well, that's because I messed up and forgot to put the correct value for the path here. So I fixed the path. Let's go ahead and tab out again. And then we have the message here, path was found, much like what we saw with connected, once we were able to actually connect against the instance in the credential provider. If we see path was found here, that means when we looked up the path through that credential provider, then we're able to receive back and know that that path is valid within that instance. Now the next two fields define the fields that are within the store within HashiCorp Vault. In my case, I've set up a username key of username and a password key called password. And for my description and ID, I'm going to say vagrant-v1 and click on create. So now at this point, since I've defined this credential at the root of the operation center, this credential is available to anything from this level all the way through to the bottom of every connected controller to this operation center. So this credential is available to anyone and everyone all the way through. Said differently, if they know the ID of this credential, then they will be able to access this credential. Let's go ahead and add a secret text credential as well. So the kind is secret text. I'm gonna change my secret engine to V1. Again, the authentication is operation center. My path, is secrets v1, creds, my secret text dash v1, tab out, path is found. Now, unlike the username password, we only have a single field here because it's a secret text, it's a single string value. So in this case, the key value in, for my credential, I just named it secret. And for my description and ID, I'm just gonna put in my secret text v1 and click on create. So what we have at this point is we have a HashiCorp Vault credential provider created, and then we created two credentials within Cloud CI that map back to HashiCorp Vault. So let's go down to our controller and create a pipeline to use these credentials. Remember these IDs, vagrant-v1 and mysecrettext-v1. So go back to the operation center, go down to my controller. Let's create a new item. We're gonna call it test pipeline v one We'll click on pipeline and click okay. We'll scroll down to our pipeline definition section, and I've pasted in the values here for a sample pipeline. What I'm doing is I'm accessing the credentials vagrant-v1 and the credential for my secret text-v1, and I'm loading them into environment variables u1 and s1. And then I'm just trying to echo out these credentials. Now, with these being credentials, they will be masked out in our console output, but as long as I get the masked out credentials, then I know I'm actually accessing those credentials. Let's go ahead and click on save and now click on build now. As the job starts up, what we'll see is we see with credentials, it's showing the masking support, and then we see our two credentials listed out, but they're actually masked out because they are credentials. So what this tells me is I was able to access Vagrant V1 and my secret text V1 from a job within my controller for credentials that are defined up on the operation center. This is a key part so far. Those two credentials exist on the operation center and they are made available to my controller. If we go into the controller right now and go to manage Jenkins, what you'll see here is we have no real credentials defined here other than one that I had a long time ago, but I also don't see the vault provider. Remember I said at the very beginning, you must have the vault plugin installed on the operation center and on the controllers where you want to use credentials from HashiCorp Vault. So even though I haven't defined a vault credential provider on the controller, it's still able to use the credentials from HashiCorp Vault via the operation center. Now, the other part that I wanna show in this video is accessing my V2 credentials. And they look almost exactly the same as what we did with V1. Now, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to define these credentials at the root of my controller. So in order to do that, I'll go back to Manage Jenkins. I'm on my controller. We can see client controller in the header. I'm going to go to credential providers. What we'll see here is HashiCorp Vault credentials provider, which this block is exactly the same as the block that we used over on the operation center. Now, in my case, I might add a new vault authentication. Maybe I'm going to a different app role for this specific controller. That's okay. For my example today, I'm just gonna use the exact same credentials. 
So let's go ahead and set this up. There's my vault URL. I'll skip. We'll add an authentication. Select app role. Authentication ID, in this case, I'm going to say CM11 because that's the name of my controller. I'm going to skip namespace, paste in role ID, paste in my secret ID, and let's click on test connection. We see connected, so we know we're able to connect from the controller down to the HashiCorp Vault instance successfully. We'll click on save. Now in this case, let's go ahead and set up two new credentials. We'll select HashiCorp Vault here, click on global, add a credential. We'll do secret text first. We'll make sure the secret engine is secrets engine v2. Our authentication is CM11. Our path is that value. We tab out, we see path was found. The vault key, because it's a secret text in my situation, is named secret. And then my description and ID will be my secret text v2. We'll click on ID here and click create. Let's go ahead and set up a credential for username password. We have v2, cm11. We'll paste in our path. We can see it was found, so we know we're able to connect up. My username key is gonna be username. My password is gonna be password. And my description and ID are gonna be vagrant v2. So now we've mapped two credentials from within HashiCorp Vault into our controller. So if I was to try to access these credentials on any other controller, they would not be accessible for me from this controller, CM11. So let's go ahead and go back over to the root of CM11. Let's add a new item. We'll say test pipeline v2. Select pipeline and click OK. We'll go ahead and paste in our new pipeline script here. It looks very similar to what we did over in pipeline v1, but in this case, we're accessing the Vagrant v2 and the My Secret Text v2 credentials, but we're still following the same pattern that we did with v1. Let's go ahead and click on Save and click on Build Now. What we can see here as it started up, we saw our mass support patterns for the U2 and S2, and this is what we would expect to see in the console output for these credentials. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.